lives on earth. Your, your stay right here now is like a vacation. <laughs> Amen. But still living from the goods from heaven. Amen. Well, pastor, I don't feel like I'm living in heaven. Well, you can. I said you can. Jesus said so. And the uh, disciple said, Lord, teach us to pray. He said, oh, when you pray, say this. Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Just like it's being done in heaven. Amen? Amen. So you can have and taste right now things going on in heaven while you're here on earth. Amen? Amen? Even in 1 John it says in the scriptures that even as Jesus is right now, so are you in this world. Amen? So there's a lot of things we need to take advantage of here on earth. Isn't that right? Amen. So uh, let's turn to uh, Philippians and uh, read that because it's a, it's a powerful verse showing that you are a citizen of heaven. Philippians chapter 3. If you look on your bulletin, you'll see many of the scriptures we'll use this morning there. So in uh, Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20. For our citizenship is in heaven. It says it right there. Your citizenship is in heaven. Amen. If you've received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your citizenship is in heaven. No matter what nation, what tribe, what area of the world you live in, and, but you are a Christian, you are uh, in Christ Jesus, you've received Jesus Christ as Lord. Amen. Just like after every service we, we speak, that if thou shalt confess the Lord Jesus as Lord and believe that God raised him from the dead on the third day, you shall be saved. Amen? So if you're saved, you're a citizen of heaven. Hallelujah. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which also we eagerly wait for a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform the body of our humble state into conformity with the body of his glory by the exertion of the power that he has even to subject all things to himself. Amen? So what, what I want you to concentrate on this morning is you are a citizen of heaven. And if you are a citizen, then you need to be a living and abiding by the, as a citizen from heaven. Amen? So that you'll look like an alien on earth. If you're living on this earth and you look earthy, you don't even look like you're, you're heavenly, then you're not enjoying, amen, all the benefits from heaven right now. Amen? And so I wanted to show you a few other scriptures. First uh, Peter uh, chapter 2, verse 9. Now I'm going to go through these quickly because we have so much ground to cover. But uh, in 1 Peter 2, 9, it says that uh, you've been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. You're, you're no longer operating in darkness, but you're now able to operate in his glorious light. Amen? Uh, Romans 12, 2, be not conformed to this world. Don't look. Don't be formed and fashioned and acting and talking and walking in the rudiments of this world. But be ye transformed. Amen. There's a time of transformation going on in you so that you start acting and looking like a citizen from heaven. Didn't Jesus portray that? In his life being filled with the Spirit, led by the Spirit of God, Jesus kept bringing things from heaven on earth. Everywhere He went, changing frowns to smiles. Amen? That's what Jesus did. Hallelujah. Except for a few old sore heads, Pharisees and scribes and, you know, uh, some of the Sadducees and 
so forth. Some of them kept their frowns. Some of them believed. Hallelujah. Uh, 1 John 4, 4. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen? So you can see he's making the distinction between the world and those that are in Christ. Hallelujah. 1 John 5, 4. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Notice the victory over the world. You can, by living in the citizenship of heaven while still in earth, you can have victory over the world. Jesus said, I believe it's in John chapter 14, he said that uh, in this world you'll have tribulations, but cheer up! I have overcome the world. And in me, you can overcome the world. Amen? Anything that the world can throw at you, amen, you can overcome it. If you're operating and enjoying the benefits from heaven, you have rights. Amen? You have rights yes. and privileges yes. from heaven that you can operate on earth. Yes, amen? Yes. Colossians 1.13, For he rescued us. Amen. Jesus rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred. No, it's transferred. You have your transfer papers. Amen. You have had your transfer papers. He's transferred us from the domain of darkness and to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Amen. Amen. So when your sins were forgiven by the blood of Jesus, you called upon Jesus, he automatically took his blood, covered you, cleansed you, and now you've been transferred from darkness into his marvelous light, into, into the domain of his son. Amen. Now with privileges and rights in operating from heaven's standpoint. Amen. From heaven. We need to be more heavenly minded. Amen so that we can be more earthly good. Did you just hear what I said? You know, the old saying is, this is not scriptural, but sayings, you know, be careful of sayings. You're so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. Well, that, I, I differ with that. Because Jesus was totally heavenly minded, and he did all the earth, all the good. Come on now. And so therefore, being in Christ, you can too be of a heavenly mind, and be more earthly good. Amen? Hallelujah. So be careful of old sayings. Praise the Lord. Okay. Now, uh, something I want to bring up, uh, you'll find these some of these scriptures in uh, Numbers chapter 14. That's not on the bulletin. But I just wanted to show you quickly with some scriptures showing that he transferred you. Amen? Out of darkness into his light, out of the domain of the devil, and into the domain of the Son of God. Amen? And so he showed us with a consecrated life how things ought to be from heaven's standpoint. Jesus came into the world and just transformed things and places and people's lives here on earth. He showed us the way heaven ought to look. Amen? He showed us if, if one is of a heavenly mindset, of a heavenly citizenship, then he can operate on earth and change earth into more heaven-like. I said you can have heavenly days here on earth. You can. Jesus did it. He showed it. He prayed it. God did it. Jesus said, the works that I do, they're not mine. The works that I do, the Father doeth them through me. Amen? He recognized that the Father who lived in heaven was actually operating through him. But he was doing the earth good. It says so in, in uh, 1 uh, Corinthians, no, it's Acts chapter 10 at Cornelius' house, and it says that Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost who went about doing what? Good! Good! and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Amen? There is, there is an enemy that wants to keep you in darkness and who wants to keep you under bondage, who wants to keep you in condemnation, but there is the Savior who gets you out of darkness, out of condemnation, and out of trouble, 
and into his marvelous light. Amen? We, we should be such lights on this earth that people will go to you and say, what is with you? Why are you so different? You know, I grew up with brothers, and uh, <clears throat> I was a gray sheep among black sheep. I didn't say I was perfect, see. But as I was uh, walking through the halls at the high school, now, <laughs> i got to make this fast. Uh, one of my older brothers, he was a terror. Even the teachers didn't like him. The principals didn't like him. He was always causing problems, fights, and throwing books out of third floor windows, you know, for other students. and not. <laughs> I mean, he was just a terror. One of the teachers just started taking his tie off, said, me, you and me, Lane, we're going outside right now. I, <laughs> you know, we're going to have it out, you know. And, uh, and then I had a younger brother. He was called Iron Pants because the vice principal was always giving him, you know, swats, bam, 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 you know. And, but I was, you know, uh, going to church. It wasn't perfect, but I was, I was following God as close as I could. I was part of the annual staff, and if I was walking down the halls, between classes, or during classes, rather. And if the principal or vice principal or any teacher saw me, they knew that I had a mission. They knew that I, was, I could be there. I just had a personal pass in the high school there in Fort Worth. And if I was walking the halls during the classes and all that, they knew I was, because I was part of the annual staff and I was uh, president of a club, you know, the science club and things like that. Not to brag of myself, but I was just more of a light figure than a dark figure, okay? <laughs> and, uh, and so one day, now I'm bringing this up because I was, I was uh, about to go up the stairs, you know, when the vice principal was coming down that called, you know, my younger brother Iron Pants because Matthew never cried. I mean, every time he swore at him, he gave him his best shots. He just looked up at him, at the vice principal, and like, are you done? You know? And uh, one time he said he had a, the vice principal in his office had this big bulldog, you know, to make him look tougher. He's a big guy, guy too. And he said he's, he wanted all the students that he was giving swats to to put their hands on the desk. And he said, now look up at the dog. And so Matthew looks up at the vice principal. He gave him more best shot. Bam! 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 And he still just looked down. My dad used to say, I hated to swat Matthew because he had no emotion. He showed none. To this day, he shows none. He's just a hard-faced guy, you know. So anyway, I'm walking down the hall. The vice principal sees me. I'm fixing to go up the stairs. He's coming down, and he just looks at me and says, what happened to you? He just kept going. Well, it was Christ Jesus. I was walking more in light than in darkness, like my two other brothers. And, and so just to show you, even though we, we had the same parents living under the same roof and we would sleep in the same house every night, you see, but I noticed, you know, it, my, the biggest difference I saw of course, I kept going to church, and they stopped going. And, but their friends that they hung around with had the biggest influence on them. So when you're transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, your friends should change. Amen? And so uh, I was a Christian in college, but when, when I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost... It even changed more. Amen? I started hanging around with spirit-filled students that met on Thursday night in a house off a of campus, a little place they rented. They just loved the Lord so much, and I saw, I saw a greater walk in the Lord when I got with the spirit-filled students. I mean, they were serious. We're having prayer on Wednesday morning. We're having prayer on Friday nights. We're having a get-together on Thursday nights. And you want to be there? I said, yeah, I want to be there. Well, I had one of my uh, friends that I went to church with before I was spirit-filled on campus. The place to go to was the First Baptist Church where most of the students went, you know, 
in Nacogdoches, Texas. We were attending Stephen F. Austin State University, and uh, that was the place to be. You know, it was the biggest church, and had it was just a crowd of people like that. And I would go with my roommate there, you know, on Sunday mornings, and that was it, you know. And, and uh, you know, it was kind of like the place to be seen and to see, you know. And and so uh, that's the place to go if you you know to be kind of religious minded. Give your little religious you know warm seat you know filled. And so after I got spirit filled, I left the crowds and went with the few, about twelve, fourteen, fifteen sometimes, of those that were just serious minded heavenly minded I saw in the word greater more depth in the scriptures and so I want to bring you back in in uh, numbers chapter 14 <clears throat> and God got seriously mad at the children of Israel now they've already left Egypt okay Egypt now you know me when I'm preaching many times the your left side of the podium is the Old Testament and your right side of the podium is the New Testament, New Covenant, okay? Numbers chapter 14 is talking about, uh, because I'm going to transfer your thought pattern to the new from the old, because the old is always a picture of the new, amen? And so the old was, there were three different groups of people in the Old Testament uh, during Moses' time. Those who left Egypt, and those who did not leave Egypt, okay? And you'll see when they left in, in uh, Exodus chapter 2. And, and so there were those that were in Egypt and those who left Egypt. Egypt was the top of the world, okay? Transform thinking, New Testament. Those that are born again and those who are not born again, okay? Those that are a citizenship of heaven and those who stay in the world. Okay, born again, not born again, Old Testament. Those who left Egypt and those who stayed in Egypt, okay? Second type of people, those who are in the wilderness, still learning, okay, about the mercies and the loving kindness of the Lord and, and to learn to walk in faith and not in fear, to have trust in God and not to be those who are murmuring and complaining and always wanting to go back to Egypt. Transformation thought, New Testament. The second type of people in the New Testament is like those in the wilderness were learning how to stop fearing and putting more of our trust in God, stop complaining and murmuring, but having faith towards God and speaking His Word instead of our words. Amen? And then the third type in the Old Testament is those who went into the promised land and started eating all the grapes and the fruit and the bearing much, much kind of cattle and sheep and goats and the, the grass was plentiful and the land that flowed with milk and honey, all provision, all power. You see, back in the wilderness, though, the second type of people were those who were struggling. Str they thought they were struggling, but God kept giving them water from a rock. God kept giving them shade in the heat of the day with the cloud of, uh, cl pillar of a cloud that gave them shade. And at night when it got cold in the wilderness, God made a big pillar of fire that kept them warm at night and a nightlight. Yeah, God gave them a nightlight, amen, to kind of, you know, to give them uh, uh, security and warmth from, from the beast of the, of the land. And so in translating the third type in the New Testament, those who finally got a grip on faith, those who finally understood that they could put their trust in God and they could, you know, pray the word of God and they could speak by faith moving mountains, amen, and uh, bringing forth provision from the Lord. Those who are living in the lap 
amen, of God himself, of all provision, all joy, all peace, amen. Have you seen those type of people? Hallelujah. That's the type that we need to be like, amen. And so many, many people never got out of the wilderness. The majority of the people did not leave the wilderness, amen. And today, probably the majority of the body of Christ, Lord forgive me for even saying it, are, are still in their wilderness experience. They've never learned to stop complaining and murmuring. It says in the scriptures in Numbers chapter 14, now, now that you see the three different types of people, you'll see here, um, oh, my, 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 this is, this is really good. We need to read this quickly. Let's go to Numbers 14, and we'll begin here at uh, verse 20. So as you can start seeing that God said, some of y'all are going to the promised land. I can see it. Some of y'all are not. And the distinction that was made was there were 12 spies, one man from each tribe. There were 12 tribes of Israel. And one man was selected from each tribe to go into the promised land because that's ultimately, ultimately where they were going. Now, this is just like ten, within 10 days of crossing over from Egypt in, into the wilderness, and they immediately went to the other side of the wilderness where the River Jordan was, and they were about, I mean, uh, uh, the Red Sea, and they were about to go into the Promised Land. No, it was the, it was the Jordan River. And they were about to go into the Promised Land, but they said, let's go figure it out, let's go spy it out. Of the 12, two had a good report. Said, yeah, there's milk and honey. There's, there's grapes, big, big loads of grapes. There's fruit. There's, I mean, it's awesome over there. The other 10 said, yeah, there, it's awesome over there. But those 10 said, we cannot take it. We can't go there. They had fear in their hearts because they said, there's giants in the land, and in their eyes, we look like grasshoppers. That was their mentality. They did not have a transformed mind, a heavenly mindset, where they knew that God was able to, uh, to deliver into their hands the land that he promised Abraham. Their great, 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 great grandfather was Abraham. And God says, I give you this land which was Israel. He's talking about Israel. That's, that was the promised land that was flowing with milk and honey. So these, these ten spies says, we can't do it. They, they stayed there about 40 days, just venturing around, camping out, and looking at all the, the great abundance that this land was producing. And ten said, we can't take it. We can't go there. We're, we're going to be swallowed up of the inhabitants. Two said, oh man, it's awesome over there. We can do it, Moses. It was Joshua and Caleb. Okay, read verse 20. So the Lord said, I have pardoned them according to your word, Moses, but indeed, as I live, all the earth will be filled with the glory of the Lord. Surely all the men who have seen my glory and my signs, which I performed in Egypt and in the wilderness, yet have put me to the test these ten times and have not listened to my voice. They shall by no means see the land which I swore to their fathers. I promised it to them, but they're not going to get it. Did you hear that? Important line, line item we all need to read. By no means they'll see the land which I swore to their fathers. They're not going to see it, though I promised it to them. All the promises of God and in Christ are yes and amen, but that doesn't guarantee we'll get it. I'm going to show you why. It's going to tell you why. Nor shall any of those who spurn me see it, they keep testing me. But my servant Caleb, because he has had a different spirit, mm, because he had a different spirit and has followed me fully, Caleb's going to see it. 
And I will bring into the land which he entered, and his descendants shall take possession of it. Caleb went over there, and he came back. And because he had a good report, because he had a faith report, he's going to get it. Now, this is right there before, I mean, we're talking 10 days into the wilderness. But they stayed 40 years. Verse 25. Now the Amalekites and the Canaanites live in the valleys, turn tomorrow and sit out to the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation? See, the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron and saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation who are, what? This is their sin. Grumbling against me, murmuring, complaining. Another place in the Scriptures that says that God heard them in their tents. See, we weren't in front of a lot of people. They'll say, oh, yeah, we can take it. We can get back in their tents at night with their wife and be going, man, I don't know how we can do it. We ain't got enough money in our bank account. Uh, I, I don't see how we can do it. You know, I, I don't think the, I'm ready to go back to Egypt. I'm ready to go back into the world, the world's ways. Let me just operate that way. At least I know that we had a meal every night. They had a meal in the wilderness every day too. It was the bread from heaven. And God even, when they're complaining and murmuring, sometimes he just sent a whole covey of quail, millions of quail. It says they ate so much meat, so much quail, that it was, and when they snorted, it came out of their nose. That's a lot of quail. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> What's that stuff that, that green sauce that you get with uh, wasabi. wasabi? Have you ever snorted wasabi up your nose? I mean, <laughs> man, that's a lot of quail, folks. And so <laughs> I will bring the land... But see, the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation who are grumbling against me? I have heard the complaints of the sons of the Israel which they are making against me. Say to them, this is what you're going to say, Moses and Aaron. As I live, says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I will surely do to you. Your corpses will fall in this wilderness. Even all your numbered men, according to your complete number, from 20 years old and upward. Notice he had mercy on the young. Because he, in the next few years, the parents were going to have to die off. And then he's going to have to have time to raise up the 20-year-olds, the 19-year-olds, the 18-year-olds, to raise them up and an attitude of faith under Josh, Joshua and Caleb. Joshua and Caleb, their corpses, they went into the promised land. They did not die in the wilderness. From 20 years old and upward who have grumbled against me, surely you shall not come into the land in which I swore to settle you. See, God's, God's plan, God's perfect plan was to get all three million Israelites that left Egypt into the promised land, but only a, just a few made it in 40 years. He promised it. I should have it. Why don't this come to pass? Why don't that come to pass? Oh, I don't see it coming to pass. I don't believe that God really meant what he said. Maybe that's not God's will. Maybe, yeah, complain, grumble, complain. You're supposed to be speaking his word. His word was, I shall have the promises that God has promised me and my children. We shall live, amen, and not die. We shall see the good of the land. We shall obey God in all of his, his word and his ways, amen. That's the words, that's, that's the difference between those who got the land and those whose corpses died in the wilderness and were buried. Their words. Their words. Are you grumbling and complaining in your bedroom at night? Or are you speaking the word of Christ? Are you speaking the word of God? 
when, when, a, when a financial wave of uh, destruction, seeming destruction, comes against you, maybe a bill you forgot to pay and you don't have the cash. Do you, what, what's coming out of your mouth? See, those who are abiding in his word and his word abiding in them and they abiding in Christ, John chapter 15, verse 7, that you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Those who abide because you already know the will of God. And so you, the, when the first, when you start opening that letter and it says you owe this, what's coming out of your mouth? Oh, I don't know if we're going to make it. I just don't know. You know, are you saying... My God shall supply all of my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Is that coming out of your mouth? Or is grumbling and complaining coming out of your mouth? He hears you in your tents at night. And what you say, he has to allow to come to pass because you said it. What's coming out of your mouth? What desired result do you want? The promises? Or you want to stay in the wilderness and die? I, I hope I'm encouraging, not discouraging. Amen? Hallelujah. <laughs> I tell it like it is, yeah. Come into the land which I swore to settle you, except Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. Your children, see, Joshua is one of the promise keepers. Amen? Joshua and Caleb and their descendants. Your children, however, whom you said would become a prey, I will bring them in, and they will know the land which you have rejected. See, he's given some mercy toward the children. I know if the parents will die off, then they're going to have a chance, 20 years and younger, to listen and hear from Joshua and Caleb. Because when Moses died, Joshua took over a man of faith and glory. A man that knew his God. Those who know their God, they shall do exploits. They'll get the promises. Amen? Hallelujah. Oh, oh, yes. Come on, let's read now. Verse 31. Your children, however, whom you said would become a prey, I will bring them in and they will know the land which you have rejected. But as for you, your corpses will fall in this wilderness. Your sons shall be shepherds for 40 years in the wilderness, and they will suffer for your unfaithfulness until your corpses lie in the wilderness. According to the number of days which you spied out the land, 40 days, for every day you shall bear your guilt a year, even 40 years, and you will know my opposition. I, the Lord, have spoken. Surely this... I will do to all this evil congregation who are gathered together against me in this wilderness. They shall be destroyed, and there they will die. As for the men whom Moses sent to spy out the land and who returned and made all the congregation grumble against him by bringing out a bad report concerning the land, even those men who brought out the very bad report of the land died by a plague before the Lord. But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, remained alive, remained alive, amen, remained alive, and of those men who went to spy out the land. So the ten died, and all the descendants down to 20 years old. They died in the wilderness. But Joshua and Caleb and their families, you know what happened when they finally met the after 40 years, and, and uh, Caleb had been telling his children all this time, we're going to go, we're going to be there, we're going to grab the land. And one of his daughters was so full of faith that Caleb's daughter, one of his daughters came to him, said, Dad, Dad, give me the southern springs. And Caleb had so much land, he said to his daughter, No, it's not going to be yours. That's all. No, no, he said, Daughter, the southern springs are yours. She had so much faith. She asked and she received. She'd seen those springs, how beautiful they are with the big trees and bearing fruit and all that. Daddy, I want the southern springs. I want to build a house that sits up on a little knoll looking over the springs when the deer come down in the mornings to drink water. And Caleb said, yeah, you can have it. I've got some other places that i got my own. Because he maintained 
faith through those 40 years. Amen? Hallelujah. And so th that's what I wanted to show you this morning. The only difference between those who obtained the promises and those who died in the wilderness words. The only difference was the words. Jesus said, I'll close with this scripture. You know it well. We teach it and preach it around here. Mark chapter 11, verse 22 and 23, have faith in God. For whosoever shall speak into this mountain and say, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have, he shall have whatsoever he saith. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Are you coming in line with God's word? Are you grumbling and complaining? It's up to you. Amen? It's up to you. God knows who's speaking in their tents faith. God knows who's speaking in their tents, grumbling and complaining. Do you want your situation to turn around? Start turning this tongue into words of blessings. Amen? And not words of cursing. Praise the Lord. Surely, come on up. I want you to close with a word of faith. How many of you know that Shirley's going to give you a word of faith? Amen. Hallelujah. Come on up. Amen. Amen. The word of God tells us, and to him that ordereth his conversation aright, will I show the salvation of God. You know, the word tells us we must be doers of the word and not hearers only. How many of you would be awesome Christians if there were no people? <laughs> you know, the as I was thinking about this this morning, as Mark was sharing, many of her Many of us throughout our lives have been driven crazy by a bunch of crazies. It's not always the easiest place to be. But the more that we come into agreement with his word, the more that we speak his word, the more that we begin to proclaim his word, we will find ourselves at a place will no longer be driven crazy by the crises. The closer we come to him, the more we will be like him. Because you know, in the scriptures, you know, we find out that God doesn't measure us by our gifts, but he measures us by the way that we love people. It's one of the most difficult places that many of us can ever be. But the things that will show others that we're Christians, that we are Christ is how we treat people, what we say about people. No one's listening and no one's watching. But God, would you like to be free from anger, bitterness, resentment, hatred? Every decision that we make we confirm it by the words of our mouth. As we declare over people, you know, I forgive those people. I release them. 
Maybe you've had a lot of hatred in your life. Maybe you have been dis-eased in your life. Have you had cancer of the soul, which is hatred that never ends? Y'all, the closer we come to him, the more we will become like him. I know that throughout our lives, many of us have put aside the old man. But some of us have kept that old man on life support just in case we needed him. Because he could do something that, as a born-again believer, we couldn't do, right? But it's a time and a place where we arrive in him, where we put to death, and we bury the old man once and for all, never to be risen again. It's that place where we come into him and we say, Lord, I want to be like you. The word tells us that we must be imitators of Christ. We must be like him. What did he speak? Did he speak words of faith? Oh, that was all that came out of his mouth. He would see people healed. He would see them whole. He would see them well. He would see them delivered. He would see the people free. He would see them even risen from the dead. But our mouth, our words of our mouth are so vitally important. What do you want to speak over your life? Are you okay where you're at? Are you ready for change? If we will begin to speak and proclaim what the word of God tells us, we will no longer be in the place where we have been. Because as we order our conversation aright, the word of God will take us and bring us out of a pit, out of the miry clay. He'll bring us into life and life more abundantly because this is what his word is all about. We must speak life. Are you sick? Are you struggling with some sickness, some disease? Are you going to do what the word of God says? Or, or do you want to die and leave your corpse in the wilderness? Maybe you're ready to rise up and say, you know, no, I'm ready to proclaim the word of God. I'm ready to dare to believe that God's word is true. Maybe you've not been feeling well. What does the word of God say? He said, let the sick say, I am well. Maybe you've been weak. Maybe you're, you've just been physically weak and you're not, not feeling well and you know, the fatigue of life can overwhelm us sometime. And the word of God said, let the weak say, I am strong. He said, let the sick say, I am well. Can you say, I am healed? I am transformed. I'm coming into agreement with the word of God. I'm leaving the old man in the wilderness. I'm headed on into the promised land. Why? Because the word of God says whatever we have need of, he's everything that we have need of. He is our all in all. He's our savior. He's our restorer. He's our victor. He's made a way. He said, come on. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. You want to be yoked up with anybody? Let's be yoked up with him. Why? Because he said, I'll go before you. I'll prepare the way. Well, when, when, you're, when you're weak, he says, oh, I'm strong. Don't worry about it. Get ready. Come into agreement with me. Begin to speak and declare over your life. Didn't make any difference what you have, what the doctors have prophesied over you, what they have spoke over you. Are you ready for a change? You begin to put your mouth into agreement with God's word and say, you know, Lord, I can see. I am well. Lord, I thank you that I have ears, that I can hear your voice. Lord, I thank you, Lord. Lord, that today is the day of my salvation. Lord, I thank you that today, Lord, I'm ordering my conversation to right. God, I thank you that today you are raising me up. Lord, I thank you that I'm not the person that I used to be. Lord, I thank you that I'm coming into agreement with your word. Lord, I thank you now that my health, 
every cell in my body must come into alignment with the word of God. Whenever I was sick and they didn't give me any hope, I knew I couldn't repeat what the doctor said over me. I had to tell my body what the word of God said about me. The word of God would say that he would make a way. The word of God said that I would live and I would not die. The word of God said that he himself bore my sicknesses. He carried my diseases. The word of God would tell me that by his stripes that I am healed. He said he would raise me up. I remember the doctor telling me that my liver was so calcified that he'd never seen a liver as bad as mine and never seen it ever turn around. And I remember going home and thinking, well, Lord, I'm so glad that you have plenty of livers. Lord, I need, I need a new liver. Lord, Lord, and you know, he gave me a new liver. I'm so excited. I'm so thankful. He said, Shirley, your lungs, they're not working right. They're eating up with cancer. Lord, I need some of them too. Lord, you either heal the ones or just fix them or you just give me new ones. Whatever you need to do. Why, whenever, whenever I couldn't see across the room, I said, Lord, I need some work on my eyes too. Lord, I thank you, God, that you have made me every whit whole. That there is nothing missing. That there is nothing left out. He is our all in all. If we will believe him, if we will take him at his word, he said, I will take sickness far from you, out of your midst, never, ever to be brought up again. I said, yes, Lord. I come into agreement with you, Lord. Lord, I thank you that you have sent your word and you have healed me and you have delivered me from all of my destruction. And I'm so thankful, y'all, that his word is true. His word is life. His word is alive. His word makes us whole. His word brings healing and restoration. His word makes us all new again. <laughs> And I am so thankful because my old man needed to die. I needed to be made new. Y'all, as we order our conversation, as we begin to speak, he said, even speaking those things that be not as though they already were. I remember my oncologist asking me one day, Shirley, how are you doing? I said, I'm well. I'm whole. I'm healed. I said, Shirley, your calcium is really bad. Shirley, uh, just I don't know how much longer that you're going to be able to hold on. I said, yeah. God makes all things new. You know, it's so important that we don't ever come into agreement I remember whenever the doctor was draining my lungs and he said, Shirley, you've been, I don't know how you're alive, you've been operating at 0% capacity on your lungs, your, your uh, oxygen level, Shirley. I said, Lord, I'm so thankful that you're the very air that I breathe. God, that you will cause things to come into alignment with your word. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that my, un my lungs are full of air. Lord, I'm, I'm so thankful, Lord, that I'm breathing in areas, Lord, that I hadn't breathed in before. Lord, I thank you that every day, Lord, that I grow stronger and stronger. Why? Because, y'all, he, his word is who he is. He is the giver of life. He's the one that brings us restoration. He's the one that brings healing. He's the one that changes every area of our life. And he said, if you don't like where you're at, begin to put yourself in agreement with this word. He said, declare my word so that I may establish it. I said, yes, yes, yes. So I'm healed and whole and well and restored. Because of his word. Because of what he has given us life. Y'all, when we recognize 
that it's no longer us that lives, but it is Christ that lives in me. The life that I'm living, y'all, I'm living by faith in him. Every day of my life, I live by faith in him. Y'all, he makes all things new again. And I'm so grateful. You know, God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. You know, this last week of my life has been, uh, you know, it's been like I've been on this incredible racetrack going at full force. And to see that God has healed people. He set them free. He's raised them up. He's opened the deaf ears. He's opened the blind eyes. He's causing the lame to walk. Every place that we've gone this week, it has just been the incredible presence of God is so strong wherever that we go. When we realize and we recognize that it's no longer us that's living, y'all. But, y'all, we've stepped into the promised land. And now it's Christ that is living inside of us. And there is no lack in him. Y'all, he is so big. He is so amazing. He is so mighty. And I'm so thankful that he is everything that we'll ever need. You know, there was a time that I remember writing a check for 50 cents because that's all the money that we had. And I wrote a check for 50 cents to put into the offering that morning. We didn't have any groceries. We didn't have anything. But I knew that 50 cents wasn't going to go very far. Mark had been working for an oil company and uh, they were waiting for a deal to close and we were just absolutely broke. But we planted seed. Do you know that God caused all things to become new again? You know, I give much more now than what I used to make in an entire year. And you know, I've been believing God that every year, God, that your word would declare that you would make a way. God, that you'll give us incredible insight. You'll give us new ideas. God, that you will cause rivers of wealth to run and flow under our feet. And whatever we need, Lord, we just can reach down and pick it up. You know, he has so changed the way that I think that I'll never be broke another day in my life. Because I see that his word can penetrate through my own understanding. And he can bring forth heavenly ideas. He can bring wisdom from heaven to show me what to do and what not to do. Y'all, he has brought me into a place of freedom in every area of life. Now, I'm not saying that I've attained where I need to be because I continue to press forward. The word says you press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I said, Lord, one day I remember we, I was believing God for God to multiply us. I went into the grocery store and I only had a few dollars. But God would take it and so multiply it. And y'all, I haven't been at that place in a very long time. But you know, I remember where God brought me from. I remember the wilderness. But to step into the promised land has been life transforming. But you know how it came. It came through, be not conformed to this world and this world's way of doing things. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that only comes through the word of God so that now you can put on that new man who is in Christ Jesus who makes all things new again. And I'm so grateful today. Would you gather your tithes and your offerings? Will you believe God with me? Maybe you are dealing with a situation, a circumstance in your life where maybe things are not like you want them to be. Well, Y'all, in the kingdom of God, there's no such thing as a fixed income. Because if you will learn to hear his voice, he will show you 
He will impart into you new ideas, new innovations. When you take time praying, at the time that you are praying, the Word of God says, whatever things that you desire when you pray, there's a place of, in that place of prayer, in that place of restoration, When you pray, in that place of being in the very presence of God, God will begin to speak to you. Maybe you say, I hadn't had him speak to me in a long time. How much time have you spent in prayer? Because whatever things that you desire, when you pray, you believe that you receive them and you will have them. doesn't make any difference what it is, physical, whether it's spiritual, whether it's emotional, whether it's financial, you get ready because the Word of God is changing us and conforming us and causing us to pass from a wilderness mentality unto a mentality that is so transformed where heaven comes and invades this earthly mind so that I can now obtain the promises that God has in store for us. So if you'll take your tithes and your offerings, will you join with me today? Can I get the ushers to come forward? Will you believe God? The Word of God says that we can have faith and it'll be accounted as righteousness. Why? Because without Him, we can do nothing. But y'all, the Word of God tells us we'll never, ever have to be without Him ever again. He said, I'm never going to leave you. I'm never going to forsake you. I am with you always. Y'all, let's cause our mind to come into absolute, total agreement with God. And let's begin to speak. What do you need today? Do you need some new eyeballs? You begin to thank him for it. You ask him. And then he said, make your request be made known unto him. Do you need finances? Make your request be made known unto Him. Do you need healing in your physical body? Make your request be made known unto Him. Let's come into agreement with the Word of God that He said that with Him nothing will be impossible to them that believe. So, Father, we thank you today. Will you grab your tithes and your offerings? Will you dare to believe God now? Will you plant seed in faith for a mighty harvest? God, I thank you, Lord. Lord, that by faith we believe. Lord, by faith, Lord, we will obtain every promise that you have made available for us. And, Lord, your word declares that all of the promises in Christ Jesus are yes and amen unto those that will receive it. Lord, those that call upon your name, those that walk in agreement with you, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that your word tells us that yet you will show unto us a more excellent way. Lord, I thank you we call the tithes and the offerings blessed, multiplied. God, that there will be so much in your house, Lord, that there will not even be room enough to contain the blessings that you have in store for us today. Lord, we thank you now for your hand being upon us. God, we thank you, Lord, that we have sown, and Lord, that we sow in faith, Lord, that we are now coming into agreement with you, Lord, that now, according to your word, as we plant seed, Lord, that we need to be ready to receive the harvest. And Lord, I thank you, Lord. Thank you for changing the way that I think. Lord, thank you, Lord, for putting the thoughts of yesteryears behind me. And God, I thank you, Lord, for enlightening the eyes of my understanding. God, that I will walk in and continue to walk in every promise you've made available for us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our resurrected Lord, Savior, Healer, Deliverer, Redeemer. We thank you for this now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all, we have a proclamation. We have a word that we are going to speak. Who would like to do it? Brother Wesley. Since I have the microphone, I get to testify, too. Now, I know. 
Every time we give uh, our sister here, she's going to testify. Because you see, she's been touched. The God, God rose her up. And uh, so, like, I went in this week on Monday, and uh, they put me down to the knife, and I had to have my shoulder, uh, some stuff done to it. And so I got eight holes in my shoulder here that the guy microscopically fixed my shoulder with. So I testify, and I thank the Lord. I haven't had one ounce of pain. Um, and uh, it's I can feel it. I can feel the Lord in there, and he's, he's heating it, you know. And don't, don't try to put God in a box of how you need your healing. Don't do it the way Sh- Sister Shirley here does it. Do it the way God wants you to do it. And you walk, walk the way he wants you to do it. And if he tells you to go to the left, go over here to the left. He tells you to the right. And then another thing that he's done this week that I'm so thankful for, and uh, we always put things in, in how big they are, and a lot of things are big. And now my wife, uh, she's been having a little trouble with her eyes and stuff. And so we've been kind of just going to the doctors and stuff and trying to find out. You know, of course, we've been in prayer. Lord, you know, it's always nice if the Lord just goes like that and it's done with, but... Um, he hasn't, and so he's led us now, and we have a doctor in Dallas who uh, we believe that's the way. Isn't this all the way it is? Isn't this our walk? Is a walk of faith? In other words, uh, I didn't wake up last night, and the Lord said, "Like go to the doctor, or this guy." So I just want to tell the Lord, thank you, Lord, for that. And uh, and if you got to testify then I challenge you to just stand up right here in this organization anytime that you want. And I'm bypassing the pastor when I'm doing that. Because, you see, he wants to hear it himself. You know, in the military, when we went out and we came in, we got a story to tell you. And we were all thankful that we were able to say it. And so let's, uh, let's just uh, bless the Lord and tell him thankful how thankful we are. It says, I sow my seed in faith today. I seek you first today. You are my shepherd, you are my Lord, you are my provider. You are making a way where there seems to be none. You are opening the windows of heaven over my house. All of my debts are being reduced and eliminated. All of my needs are being met. You have rebuked the devourer. I am increasing more and more. I am blessed on every way. We are getting our buildings, our lands, houses, vehicles, and equipments in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Ushers, if you'll receive the offerings, tithes, gifts, seed sowing, amen. The Lord bless you abundantly in your giving. It says in the word, give and it shall be given unto you. Amen. Pressed down, shaken together, running over. He will cause men to give unto you. Amen. So God, he will never allow you to be outgiven by you. Amen. He always outgives you. He always multiplies what you give before he gives it back to you. Amen. You want to you want to put your your uh, offerings into the best investor in the universe before he returns it back to you? It will be multiplied. It says so in the Word. Amen? He's the best investor that I know of in the universe. Trust Him with your tithes and offerings. Amen? And He will open the windows of heaven and cause a blessing to overtake you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Is there anyone that has not received Christ Jesus as Lord here this morning? We want to pray with you. And maybe you've walked away from the Lord and you're returning you say pastor would you pray with me I want to return to the Lord and and live for him the rest of the days of my life or maybe you've never received Jesus Christ as Lord and you want him to be your Lord from now on you want to live in his abundance amen if that's you would you pray with me simple prayer according to the scriptures amen Let's do that right now. Saints, help me to encourage those that need to call upon him to help them to speak it out. It says, Who will whosoever will say with their mouth, Jesus be my Lord. Call upon him and you shall be saved. That's good news, folks. Let's do that now, would you? Jesus, 
be my Lord. I refuse my old ways in the world. I now receive you into my heart as my Lord and Savior. I believe that God raised you from the dead on the third day. Since you live, live big in me now. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. This is a powerful moment for those who have just freshly maybe uh, returned to the Lord or maybe for the first time, if that's you. And you're also a visitor. Meet with some folks back in the hospitality room right after you leave the service. The hospitality room, if you're exiting these back doors, look straight ahead, not to the left, not to the right. But you'll see the hospitality room. We have a free gift for all of our new visitors today. Amen? And we want to bless you and welcome you back again. Praise the Lord. Let's have some of our prayer partners come forward, and if you have any need in your life that you need prayer over, we have prayer partners that will help you pray through.